All right, welcome back everyone. This is Ebony again, AKA Fit Mom Diva of Simplicity Health Style. And today we have Miss Nicole with us. How are you, Nicole? Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us on your weekend. You guys, she's taking time away on a weekend and I'd appreciate it if you stick around to the end and you'll have an opportunity to earn a complimentary gift for doing so. She wants to deliver some awesome jewels that's gonna be able to help encourage all of you ladies that, that are listening. Nicole, just start us off so we get to know a little bit about you on a personal level and share a motivational quote that really inspires you, something that encourages you or gets you going. A quote that encourages me and gets me going is, your smile is your logo, your personality is your business card, how you leave others feeling after an experience with you becomes your trademark. Yes, and that reminds me of the quote that mentions that people often will forget what we say, but they will remember how we make them feel. And most of us, I would hope, want to be known for making someone feel something better <laughs> than before they were in our presence. So kindness and love and care and consideration, I think are key qualities. Not too many people want to be known as the grumpy, negative person that nobody likes, right? <laughs> Absolutely not. Absolutely not. <laughs> there are times in our life when we're not necessarily at our best. So what I would like for you to talk about is a time in your life where you didn't necessarily see the light at the end of the tunnel, and perhaps you had to overcome some obstacles or some unforeseen circumstances, but you were able to still bring your goal or your dream to fruition. I must say one of those challenges was going to school and trying to uh, finish my degree, my bachelor's, and trying to do it as being a single mom and having two jobs and working 12 hour shifts at the hospitals. And most times I wanted to give up and say, oh, I'm so tired. But I had to remember that life is a journey and those, those obstacles only come to make you stronger. Yes. And a lot of times after we've gotten through those obstacles, we feel like, okay, if I can get through that, then I can get through anything. And other times we feel like, well, man, that wasn't that big of a deal. I thought it was going to be so much more than that. And it wasn't. So I think that for a lot of people, we just need to sometimes embrace the journey through our challenges. I agree. I mean, I absolutely. Um, I heard something um, prior to talking with you today from my pastor and he was saying that we're every little bit counts when we're in that journey. So every one of those moments where we feel like, oh, it's not coming quick enough or it's not here as of yet, remember that he's growing us and we, he's growing us for the position that we're on our way to. Yeah. And if the wait is a little longer, that means that what he's about to bless us with is much bigger. Yeah, and sometimes much better. Yes, sometimes, absolutely. You know, sometimes and, we may be thinking that, you know, this is exactly what we want, the way we want it, and maybe there's something even better for us. If we just stay patient, then we would get that better. And I think that also just, just enjoying the moment sometimes yeah. and making the best of the moment you won't be as anxious to say, this should be here now, <laughs> you yeah, know, because you're making the best of the moment. <laughs> that's true. And it's easier said than done sometimes. I understand that in that moment when we are waiting that, you know, we worry a lot about when it's coming. And during those moments when we're worrying, we're just delaying our uh, opportunities sometimes. I've realized yeah. that through my circumstances and obstacles, instead of just living in the moment. Right. You know. Yeah, because if we're continuously living in the future, then we look back and we say, man, I could have really enjoyed that summer if I wasn't so future oriented <laughs> because Absolutely. summer came and gone and I still haven't gotten what I wanted and <laughs> I could have enjoyed that experience that much more. So taking a look at the good things in our life and being grateful for the good things in our life, I think is particularly key. Not everything's gonna be handed on a silver platter immediately. We all know that. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And we always look at what, pe what a person has now, but not look at what it took for them to get there. Yes. 
Yes, definitely. I think that a lot of times we forget to celebrate our successes and the steps that it took because for, for some of us, it's like we are so busy focused on, okay, so what's the next thing that you didn't reflect on? Well, wait a minute. If I hadn't taken these previous steps, I would have been way back here doing something altogether different. So taking a look at the growth that we've already been able to accomplish, I think is important. Yep. When we're talking about our purpose and putting our gifts into the world and being our best selves, some people feel like they don't necessarily have a lot of support or they have family or friends support, but their family and friends don't necessarily know how to support them in the best way possible for their situation. So can you talk about a time in your life where maybe you didn't have support or maybe you did have support and you were able to get through, the, through that moment and talk a little bit about what kind of resources or ideas that someone could do, utilize if they feel like they're all alone. They know what their dream is. They know what their next steps are, but they just need a little bit more um, from the people around them to get them going. Sometimes in order to get that um, and that support you need, and it may not be from your family members, may not be from your friends. I've learned to one, read about what you want to be. Two, try to find people and associate yourself with them people that are already what you want to be. Yeah. 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 And how I want about doing some of that is I am a big, um, I do social media, but I really enjoy um, networking on LinkedIn because it has opened doors for me to talk to people who have, who are in that position that I may want to be in. And they've given me great advice. Um, they've talked to me about um, certain ways to obtain the position that I'm trying to get to as well. Yeah, and I think that you, you said it just right. You can definitely utilize your immediate circle by looking for people on social media, on various platforms that have similar interests of you and similar groups, or you have mutual connections. Sometimes you can gain more support from a perfect stranger than you can your family or friends. Family and friends. If, 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 especially if they're in the same exact position that you would like to be in obviously they know what it takes to get there because they had to go through the same process right <laughs> yeah and some of us get afraid to ask questions that's the thing that's what social media is for so you can reach out and ask people questions yes yes mm -hmm. yeah i think that when you reach out to people and you talk about something that they have an interest in, a lot of times people don't mind talking about their interest areas and they're willing to help you. Now, does that mean that everybody you reach out to is going to help you and want to talk to you? No, not necessarily. Some of them could be busy and they might not respond just because of the fact that they're busy. It has nothing to do with they don't want to help you. They're just busy at that time in their life. So thinking about the fact that not everybody is going to be able to take time and speak to you, that cuts down on that fear of, well, what if they say no? Or what if they ignore me? You know, that, that feeling of rejection. There's billions of people on this earth <laughs> that are on social and media. Just keep on knocking. My thing is keep on knocking till you get an <laughs> answer. Keep on seeking. You know, um, just don't stop at one person. Right. You know? Right. That exactly. person may not just have all the answers to the part of the piece that you're trying to put together. Right. Yeah, I found that I've had to utilize people with various skill sets and knowledge for maybe the same exact project, but their strengths vary. So you're right. Not everybody is going to have all the answers. Not everybody's going to have all the time to commit to you. <laughs> so yeah. just seeking, seeking similarly minded people that can help you with, their, with that small piece of the puzzle, essentially. That's true. Talk a little bit about the relationship between self-care and carrying out our vision. Because sometimes even when we have those pieces of the puzzle from various people and everybody's working on their particular craft to make a whole, we don't always feel like we have the energy 
and the vitality to carry out our dream. And sometimes that comes from indulgence eating or lack of exercise or lack of meditation and prayer if you do that. Just general lack of self-care. And self-care looks different for everybody. Well, a little bit about the relationship between self-care and us being able to accomplish our goals faster. Well, for me, um, what I tend to do for self-care, because I can get anxious in my weight, I tend to go to the gym. You, and, and when I'm in the gym, I make sure I'm listening to the music I want to listen to because that music just puts me in the mood of just meditating and focusing on what I have to do. I also pray. I also journal. So those are some of the things that I can recommend for self-care. Um, because it's just healing. And you can also, if you journal, you can look back to next year and you go back and you look at it, you'd be like, wow, this is how far I came. Yeah, that's mm -hmm. true. That's true. And a lot of adults, they think of journaling as, oh, that's what my eight-year-old daughter does. <laughs> yeah. When in actuality, a lot of adults journal. We might write different things in our journal, but you're exactly right. Sometimes you'll go back on that content and you'll see the growth in yourself. And earlier, when we were talking about celebrating your successes, what better way to do it than to look at the written word that you put in, in your journal and be able to see the growth that way. Once you write it down on paper, it's there. <laughs> also, too, and speaking of writing it down on paper, when you write it down on paper, make sure you post it. Post yeah. it where you can see it every day so you can see what you should be working toward. You yeah. know? Yeah. yeah. And uh, one, um, one activity that some ladies will do is they will write different quotes or affirmations or meaningful things on a post-it note and put it on their refrigerator or their wardrobe mirror, just somewhere that's visible so that they can be reminded that Absolutely. they are worthy, essentially. Absolutely. And I do that myself, too. I also, um, and how I find my quotes, I also get them from, like, Pinterest. Yeah. Pinterest gives some of the most beautiful quotes that you can relate to and that speaks to yourself and i just write them down and like you say stick them somewhere where you frequently visit to remind yeah. you of how beautiful you are even in your moment of unbeautifulness to yourself yeah and i think that we all have those moments that we feel like oh i don't know if i can make it and i feel like crap and the world is coming down on me and usually it's not something that lasts for a long period of time <laughs> so, it shall pass another day shall come and it shall definitely pass right right and that's why it's important to make sure that you have those confidants and support network because I believe that the more of those people that you have in your circle whether they're an online community or they're a local community that you can get around you won't stay down in the dumps for long there are certain days where I might not feel like serving people at my best for various reasons sometimes for no reason at all. But as soon as I get around my closest friends or I start doing something that really lights me up, as soon as I do that, I forget it takes all of your that. your mind off of everything, doesn't it? Right, it takes your exactly. Mind off of it. Yeah, and nothing really, nothing really happened. That, like my circumstances didn't change. It was the same circumstances. But the way I filled my day with more joy, that changed. And a lot of times we forget to do that. A lot of times people just want to sulk and misery loves company, right? <laughs> so sometimes you just want to find somebody else that's going through some, something very similar or something very worse just so that you feel better. But why not make yourself feel better just by filling your day with things that you enjoy or filling your, your day with people that are positive and that, can, and that can lift you up as opposed to you all sulking and pity. <laughs> Yeah. wasting time don't, away. like you say don't join that person don't join them and say oh wow you know I feel you and I'm I'm going through the same thing no do the opposite you know? yeah and that's okay for a, a portion of the conversation but I don't believe that that should be how you spend the next hour of your time now unless right. you're talking about somebody died and it's very tragic that's a totally different story yeah. Spend a, spend a week if you want to in grief. But I'm talking about those 
situations that we know they're not really that big of a deal. We're just making a mountain out of a molehill. Find things that can bring you excitement and joy in your day. And a lot of times it minimizes the way that you're, you're exaggerating or catastrophizing that experience. <laughs> yeah, because you can multiply it by keep on going on and on about the bad moment that you're in at that time. Right, right, exactly. So tell me, what do you think are your biggest challenges moving forward in your life right now? And how do you think that you can gain the type of support that you need personally to be able to navigate through that? Well, my biggest challenges right now is I'm in a particular job that I am not, I feel like I'm not living out my life purpose, but I'm just gaining uh, knowledge and skill right now. And how I'm going about handling that is, one, I'm not giving up on trying to not do what I need to do to get to my life purpose. I'm yeah. applying for other positions. I'm also um, writing stuff on paper of other business ventures I want to take a part of. I'm networking with people on social media as far as on LinkedIn. I'm also ne networking with people in my organization that come to visit outside the organization that, that's going where I want, that, that is where I want to go. Right, right. And I think that what you just said is so key to network with people where of, that are already where you want to go and to also recognize how you really feel about your current situation. Because you can, you know, psych yourself out and say, well, the job isn't that bad. It's paying my bills. But in all actuality, you know that there's better for you. <laughs> you know, so I think right. you being open to the idea that there is better for you and then taking the action steps to apply for positions that you feel are a better fit for you. I think that that says a lot. You don't necessarily get what you want just by staying in the same position, right? <laughs> no, and, you don't. and also, you may not in your, the, the applications that you put in, they may not be the ones that you want right then and there. It may not be my time right then and there, but that doesn't mean I'm going to stop trying as well. Yeah. I'm not where I'm supposed to be because I feel it. Right, right. And I think that sometimes going through the process and still being turned down and rejected, even after you've put in applications, there's still things that you learn along the process that still develop your character as a person. I know that there was a time when I put in about five different applications to places that I thought that I was well qualified for, didn't get them right away. And through the process, I was beginning to see, well, if I had gotten those, then I wouldn't have been able to achieve this right here. That really is better for my big picture. <laughs> or I wouldn't have been able to meet this person because I would have been over consumed with work at that job or would have been too far and I needed to do this on you know there's a lot of different things that come into play that we don't really notice until later on so I think that everything happens to us or for us for a reason <laughs> and we just gotta roll with punches <laughs> I agree with you about that Ebony you know we have we have to look back on some of the situations that we've been in and be like wow it happened to me because A, B, and C, you know? Right. So we have to look at the seasons that we're in in our life and recognize that. And, you know, how we recognize that is, like I said, writing it down. Writing it down just in case we come in contact with that season again. And by us writing it down and reliving how we got through it will help us to get through the next season. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Definitely. I really appreciate you sharing today. And I know that there's some people that are listening that are probably like, well, you know, Nicole and Ebony, that sounds great, but I don't really have a plan as to how to move forward. And I would love to move forward, but I really don't know. I don't even know where to start. And I have all these responsibilities. Maybe I should just stay right here because this is what's comfortable. And what I found is that sometimes when ladies do some self-awareness, 
that's when they feel like, oh, I finally kind of understand my personality. I finally now kind of understand what things really light me up when I talk about them. And that's one of the things that I provide people with is help in that area of becoming more self-aware and defining what it is that they can utilize to shed some light into the world that they feel that sense of fulfillment. So for anyone that's listening, at the beginning of this interview, I said that you would be able to earn a complimentary gift. Any of you that join my Nutrition for Busy Women Facebook group, that link is in the description box. Any of you that join that group, because I want for you to be your best self, I'll offer you a complimentary personality type assessment as well as complimentary gifts assessment so that you could determine what your strengths are. And for a lot of us, it's one of those things where it's kind of like, well, now that I know what to do, how do I get out of this feeling of I'm just so overwhelmed at the end of the day? <laughs> I work 40 plus hours a week. I take care of children. I take care of an aging parent. <laughs> you know, there's so many responsibilities that we have and I can help you prioritize your time on a specific calendar using a strategy that works for a lot of ladies that feel like they're just overwhelmed and frustrated. Well, I think you made a good, definite, a good positive suggestion when you said by taking an assessment to see what your strengths and weaknesses are. Um, I myself would, will, would like to recommend that because I've done it. I've yes. taken assessments to find out what my strengths and weaknesses are. I've took assessments to find out what, what career areas I'm good in. I've taken, taken a assessment to find out what my love language is. You have to evaluate yourself yes. and not get comfortable. If you feel like you're stuck, how are you going to get out if you don't evaluate yourself? Right. It begins with self. Right. Yes. You got to and... take yourself. And they always tell you on the plane, when you get on the plane, you have to put on the mask first. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. And also make sure that you share what you learn about yourself with other people because it's all well and fine for you to know that this is your personality type and this is your love language and these are your strengths. But if nobody else around you knows it, then how are they going to know how to communicate with you? <laughs> you yeah. know? <laughs> yeah. If you're keeping your value to yourself, how are you going to open doors for opportunity? Right, right, exactly, exactly. And I also think that it's important to realize that you don't have to move so fast through this process. A lot of times when I talk to people, they wonder, they're like, Ebony, where have you been all my life? Because I'm able to help them focus really quickly. But when it comes to the action steps, don't feel like, because this person was able to achieve X, Y, Z in 30 days, but it's taken me a whole year that something's wrong with me. No, everybody has different circumstances and maybe they're able to move faster because they don't have all the different circumstances that you have. So I think as long as you're making some progress, it's still showing effort. They always say what, that slow, pro slow, slow progress is better than no progress, right? <laughs> so, yeah. And that goes back to what I was saying with every little drip counts. Every yeah. little bit of it counts. Right. Right, exactly, exactly. Thank you so much, Nicole. Do you have anything that you would like to share that we didn't talk about or any types of people that you would want to collaborate with? There's women all around the world that are going to be listening to this and some of them might want to collaborate with you with a certain idea that you have or a certain endeavor that you really gravitate toward. Anything that you want to share? Yes, thank you, Ebony, for that opportunity, for the opportunity to get to speak with you on some of the ways I deal with not being where I need to be and how I get to where I'm going to be. I hope this helps some of the ladies. I also want to connect with people who are in the healthcare industry, people who are in the business of developing others. And what I mean by that, one of my passions is to one day develop others to be, to know their strengths and weaknesses like yourself. You know, right. I, I would like to be one of those consultants to give the career test because I think you have a lot of individuals who are going into school and going to college and not actually knowing what they want to be or where they want to go. And they're just taking classes because somebody told them they need to get a degree. Yes. And I, there was, I had a career coach when I finished my bachelor's and she gave me the 
Myers Brig, and I was so impressed with the result and the career choices I should have made. I wish I would have started taking it when I was in my 12th grade year, so I'll know which direction I should or need to be going in. And yeah. I, that's what I would like to be an administrator to that for high school students. Yeah. I also have a passion for people who they they become managers but don't are not great managers. Mm-hmm. Anybody can be a manager, but not everybody can lead. Right. You know, and I feel like human resources, they don't do a great job at teaching managers how to lead. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't develop these managers. They put them in positions and they don't develop their strengths and weaknesses. They just tell yeah. them, just know that they're a manager and they're supposed to get the job done. You know, help them, help the leaders, the, the executives get the job done. And I don't think that should be the bottom line. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I strongly agree that assessments like the Myers-Briggs type indicator or any other type of reliable or valid assessment is important to understand how you can bring value to this world. And we all have different personality types. We all have different things that trigger us. We all have different things that we're not as as good at. They're, They're things that we could work on and develop. And I think that no one is in any better than another person. I think that we all just add a different type of value to make this world go round. And it does start a lot of times with understanding personality type and understanding your strengths. And for those of you that are listening, the Myers-Briggs type indicator specifically is one that I'm certified to administer. And I can provide that to you complimentary so that you use that as a basis for how you function, not only in the workplace, but also how you function in your relationships. Being able to kind of understand why you might butt heads with somebody or why you might get along with this type of person over here and knowing how to build a team with other people by knowing your personalities, I think sometimes that can minimize the arguments that could arise had you not known what that other person's personality is and you're wondering what's wrong with them. And it's just simply that you see the world and you do things differently because you're a different person. (laughs) And that's true. And I... I believe that people who collaborate in team groups should use it as well because you can put together a well-built team if you know each of your teammates' strengths. Right, right, right. And then that's that's just like me saying, you know, people put people in positions and they don't know their strengths or weaknesses. They just know that they have the educational background, but they don't know their characters and what values they bring and with values they don't bring. And I'm very passionate about developing people to see how they pair well and, you know, leadership leaders, how they should be, you know. Mm-hmm. Retention only works if you develop people. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you for sharing that. Yeah. All of you listening, if you have similar experiences that you want to share with the ladies that are listening, or if you want to share some deep challenges that you've gone through that don't relate anything to the corporate world, but you feel like ladies can benefit from hearing about because maybe it can help them or help someone that they know, please reach out and contact me. Again, all my information is in the description box. I would love for you to speak with us on whatever topic you feel like would light the world up. And if you just feel like, hey, there's nothing here that I can benefit from, but I have a cousin over here that's going through a similar thing or a family friend or whatever, whoever that you feel that this could benefit, please share it out with them. You just never know how it's going to impact them to be able to live out their life purpose. So Nicole, thank you again so much. Thank you, Ebony, for this great opportunity. You are very welcome. And for those of you listening, wherever you are in the world, don't forget to live a life full of meaning and purpose. And don't forget to share this content out. I strongly appreciate it. Talk to you soon.